the KSM Show. Hello! Well, it's very, very good to be back. And this is the first new show for the new year, man. First show in 2019. Yeah! In the house today, I have this woman. Very, very, very versatile. Very, very accomplished. She's fantastic. She's dynamic. She's actually the group chief marketing officer for F Data Bank Financial Services. Show some love, man. <laughs> her name is Miss Sugar Summer. If you say that, I think her first guest. Put your hands together. Show some love. Sugar Summer. There we go. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> Put on your seat belts, you're gonna have a fantastic show right now! The KSM Show. Welcome to the show! It's good to have you. You're from Jamaica, right? I am. I. I I don't know if you can hear the accent, but I am from Jamaica. I grew up there. Graduated high school. Then I actually went to Miami. I lived there for a couple okay. years. Then I went to Canada. Okay, so lived Jamaica, there. Miami, then Canada. Canada, yes. So I lived in Canada for 19 years and then came to Ghana. So I've been in Ghana six years. Six years now. But all of this because of my husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you met him in Ghana or you, you met him in Jamaica? Um, I met him in Canada. Oh, yes. Canada. So we have... We have an interesting story that I think most people don't believe because, you know, most people feel like you have to be dating for a long time yeah, yeah. before you can get married. And for us, it was actually, we met in church. We went to the same church, a Ghanaian church in Canada. Mm. And our, it was one of our pastors who actually tried to connect us. Set it up. <laughs> So he actually said, you know, Jillian, why don't you check out this guy? Mm -hmm. He's very nice. And he used to teach the youth. He was a youth pastor. So we went out, first date, September. We actually went to play tennis for a date, mm -hmm. our first date. And then we got, mar we got engaged in October. So two months later, we got engaged. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Actually, we didn't play very well, but it was fun. Yeah. And then we got married the following July. So within less than a year, met, engaged, married, married. done. Wow. Yeah, but it's been good. It's been and it's, and it's not been 21 years? 21 years. Yes, yeah, so wow. 2019 will be 22 years. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and so you've been, you've been in Ghana for the last six, six years? Six years, yes. But until then, you were in Canada? Yep, I, I was in Canada. So I actually went, when I went to Canada, it was to finish up university. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once I was done university, I got a job in financial services. Mm -hmm. So now I work at Data Bank, but I've been in the investment industry for since 1998. Mm -hmm. So 20 years, 20 plus mm -hmm. years, I've been in investments. And it's something I love. Like I am... I love every aspect of mm. it. I love talking to people about money. I love helping them. And I've done many, many different jobs within the industry, but there's something about being able to help people and mm. being able to talk to them about investing for the future. KSM, I don't know. I, I <laughs> Maybe after this job, you should try it because <laughs> it's good. Like it, it really, you're able to make a difference and you're able to actually see that difference that you can make when you help somebody and you know their children are better for it their family yeah, is better for it yeah, it's, it's yeah. A so wonderful how did you join data bank because i hear you're the first group uh yes hmm data bank so funny enough at the, in 2014 i was working at another place and a friend of mine called and said oh there's an ad in the newspaper and it was posted by a headhunter. So there was no mention of the company. Mm. It only said there was an ad for an investment firm. And the, so I picked it up. It just so happened that at the same time, another headhunter called and said, oh, there's, there's this job, are you interested? So I went through the interview process, which was very, very grueling, let me tell you. 
because the first interview I remember, it was like there were three people and it lasted almost two hours. Mm. The second interview was with about 10 people. Wow. And that was a whole leadership team at the time. And we, you had to, there was so much preparation. Then the third interview was with the CEO. So there were a number of steps that I had to go through to get the job, but I'm grateful. I got it. I love it. I've been four and a half years. I've been doing it. It's no complaints. Yeah. And I know Jamaica and Ghana, we always talk about culturally. They're very similar. S very similar. Very, very, very similar. You know, a friend of mine was telling me, he's Jamaican, mm -hmm. he, he, and he, he knows Ghana. He says, if you blindfolded me and took me to some parts of Jamaica <laughs> and took the blindfold off, I would still think I was in Ghana. Yes. The is only difference is probably the food. The food? That's the only thing you would know that is a bit different. Because okay. we don't have kenke and fufu. Um, you don't have the good stuff. <laughs> oh, I, but we have jerk chicken, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, you have aki and saltfish. Aki and saltfish. I know. Amazing. And it grows wild in Ghana. And, and people, they don't see it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's, you would love Jamaica. You would absolutely love Jamaica. And we have the best beaches. The best beaches. By far. That I know. By far. That I know. That I know. Aki and saltfish. Mm -hmm. You have another dish that you call food. Right? Or I was misled. <laughs> no, so the food part is, you know, people, when you ask about Usain Bolt and yeah. what makes him run, yeah. and they tell you that it's J Jamaican yam. Yeah. So the food is what goes with the Aki and Sofish. Sofish, So yeah. the food is your Ampici. items like you. Is it not Ampisi? No, it's your yam. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's all of those, the those yam, brown yam, foods. The yes, yes. The your case, the banana. Yes, green yeah. banana, yeah. not even the right banana. So that's, that's what gives us strength and athletic ability. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're starting off the year. Thankfully, you're from Data Bank. And thankfully, you have a passion for getting people to invest. I do. So this is, well, we are not starting this like the beginning of the year, but still, we've just started the year. What's your advice, general advice, people and investments? As we go into 2019, 2019, I would say my number one piece of advice would be ask questions. Mm. I think that's one of the biggest problems with, with investors today, mm. where people, they just take things blindly. Mm. You know, it, it, nobody asks questions to say, is this company credible? Mm. Who is it regulated by? Like nobody's asking. It's just a friend told me, put it here, I will get X percent. Or put it here, I'll get X percent. They don't check, nothing mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's so you hear, even when we do, we talk to clients, you hear stories. I remember I was talking to one guy and he got caught with one of these companies where now they're not able, he's not able to get his money. But the reason he put his money there was because another friend told him, mm. oh, go you know, here. go yeah. here, put your money here. He later found out that that friend didn't really get even all the interest he said he was getting, mm. but it was because he was getting a small commission for recommending. So people, they're, well, they're we're not, not asking enough questions. You're not, not probing. asking any, you're mm. not probing and you're taking money that you have worked very hard for Money that could be used to pay school fees, bills, all of those things. And you're just pushing it into some company without saying, like, what kind of company is this? What am I really putting my money mm -hmm. into? So KSM, ask. I mean, that, that's my number yeah. one piece yeah. of advice. So what, what kind of questions? You know, there are so okay. many lay people who yes. don't know anything about banking. They happen to have some money that they want mm -hmm. to put in. What, what, what questions should they be asking? What, what do they need to know? I would say a number of things. One, look at the track record of the company. How long have they been in business? Mm. That in and of itself is not a guarantee mm. that the company is, is strong, but it's one indicator. One indicator yeah. Because if you've been in business for 15, 20, like Data Bank, we've been in business, this year will be 29 years. That says something mm. about the mm. strength mm. of the business model mm. that's running behind it. So you look at the track record. You look at, you know, what if, especially in the, the realm of investments, 
the company is offering you returns. Now, you need to look at the risk that is coming with those returns. So if, you know, most people know treasury bills. So let's say treasury bills, 91 day is paying 14%. One, the mistake people make is that they hear 91 days and they hear 14% mm, and they mm. think that in, at the end of 91 days, which is three months, they will walk away with 14%. 14%. No. That 14% is for the year. So what you have to do is you divide that by four and you get a quarter's worth. That's your, your return. Now, the thing about treasury bills is treasury bills is your least risky investment. I mean, it's a government-issued mm -hmm. investment. So you take that as your base. Then you look at whatever the company is offering you. So if a company comes to you and offers you 20% on a fixed income investment, let's say, then you look at the difference between the treasury bill rate and the rate the company is offering you, and you need to ask, what is the company doing Mm. to give me that extra. Mm. How much risk are they taking mm. to give me that extra edge? That's the question people are not asking. Mm. So mm. if the company is taking the money and putting it in all kinds of corners and unmentionable investments just to give you the highest return, it can blow up in your face. Mm. So you want to ask, one, you want to look at the track record. Mm. Two, you want to look at the difference between treasury bill and whatever you are getting and find out how that difference is coming about. You also want to look at who regulates it and are they in good standing with the regulator. Know your regulator. Like investments, our regulator is the Securities and Exchange Commission. People don't want to call them. They're afraid to call the regulator. But you can, as a lay person, an average person, you can, you can call. call. Go to their website, find their number, yeah. call them, and say, listen, I want to put my money in this company. Are they in good standing mm. with you? The regulator will say yes or no. So look at things like that. I mean, there are, there are many other questions, but really the, the point is, don't be afraid to ask. Mm. KSM, mm. don't be afraid. Mm. That's very interesting information for even me as I sit here, you know, because it didn't occur to me that I could, you know, Ask. the average Joe Blow mm -hmm. can just call SEC and find out questions, That's find the out thing. answers, Pe you know, to questions. questions. Yeah. People are and intimidated by big organizations, mm -hmm, but don't mm -hmm, be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's for your, it's your money. Yeah. At the end of yeah, the day, it yeah. is your money. So yeah. don't, yeah. don't be. Folks, I, I, I hope you're getting this point, you know, it's your money. So don't just give it away. At least ask questions. And trust me, if many people had asked many questions, or even a few, uh, certain situations that we find ourselves in now might not have been. Um, so you mentioned earlier how investment and helping people invest is a passion of yours. Mm -hmm. How did that come? I mean, why investments? Why investments? Yeah. To be honest, my first job in investments, it was the first job I could get out of university, it's the first job I got. But it's, it's something that as you, you do it and you talk to people, and I think more so when I came to Ghana, the passion even grew because of the way we deal with clients mm. here. So for example, in Canada, the investment company never deals directly with the client. There's always, you have financial advisors in the middle. So everything passes through them. Here, the investment company deals directly with the client. Mm. So you are hearing the stories firsthand. You are seeing people firsthand and you are seeing the need. KSM, when somebody is earning 500 CDs a month and they've got three kids and they've got school fees and they have all of that to do and you talk to them and they have, they're, they're not saving anything. And they think that you have people who think that you have to be rich before you start investing. Mm. So you, you've, you've got people saving towards investing. No, mm. that's wrong. Like you invest so that your money can grow. And so when you've got people with very little and they need to make every CD stretch, KSM, it, it is critical. It is critical that they take they, they, they do something with that money. Yeah, they, they, they go like with basics, like he's earning, let's say, 600 a month. Mm -hmm. And by the time he's done with his what, transport, fees, whatever, he's left with practically nothing. nothing. Okay. So the idea of even saving does not occur 
to somebody in that situation? How, what would you advise somebody in the situation who thinks that there's too much month left at the end of the money? I would say there is, there's nothing too small to start with because even the smallest thing will grow. It will grow more than if you leave it at home or you chop it. If you chop it, it's gone. Mm. If you eat it, if you spend it on, on watch air or whatever, it's gone. So take five CDs. And you know, the thing is, like, we have phones. We buy data. We buy credit magically mm. out of the same 600 CDs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So KSM, if you can do that, then I'm sure you can squeeze even two CDs, three CDs into an investment. Because if not, what people are doing is they feel like they don't have enough money. So then they go and take loans. My goodness, a loan is you're paying 30% a year, 40% a year. When will you ever pay it back? You won't. It is better defer some of your plans, put something small towards investing and build from there. It's no joke. Yeah. Yeah, I think the whole concept of trying to get people to understand that you can start with little doesn't sink in. It's like, oh, but this is too small. Why, why yes. would I invest with something like this? This is too small. So if we can get people to start understanding that no matter what, yeah. you know, how low of, of money can one, does one have to have to start with data bank? Like how low? Can they walk in right now? You can walk in with anything. I mean, anything being literally, if you come to me today with one CD, I'll still open an account for you. Because it's a start. Mm. It is a start. Mm. It is something to help you grow. If I tell you that you need to come to me with 1,000, I'm not helping you. Because you may not have that 1,000 all at once, but you can get there. So that's the thing. I remember there was a gentleman I met a couple years ago, and he at the time, was actually, uh, he was head of marketing of an institution. And he said to me, so he's paid very well, lots of money. And he says, oh, Jillian, you know, I'm waiting to get my first million before I come and invest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Like, I mean, it, it's the whole point of investing, investing is you start with what you have and you grow. And then grow it. You grow. But, you know, KSM, the, just to come back to your question, the other thing that I would say makes me very passionate is retirement. That one I will speak about wherever I go. People, they're not planning. You have some people who literally think, me, I will never retire. Mm. Or they think, oh, I can start, I'm young. I can start in 10 years or yeah. 20 years. It's a lie. Don't, I, it, it, the, the state of retirement in Ghana is, is absolutely horrendous. And Yes, the government, they will do their bit. SNIT will do their bit. But that cannot be your plan. That should be a bonus to whatever mm -hmm. you have put in place mm -hmm. for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't get. Because, you know, you retire, you have to retire at age 60. Some people will live till 90. That's another 30 years in retirement that you have to fund. With what money? You have, to, you have people who are, and now a lot of the young people, they're getting married older. So the days, me, I got married at 22, so I was very mm, young. Yeah. But you have people getting married 30, 35, 40. Now, if you're getting married at that age, what age are you going to start having children? Mm. So when you hit 60, you'll still have kids in JHS and SHS. So mm. instead of worrying about just what to do to occupy your time in retirement. You have school fees. Yeah. Then you may still have parents who are living and you now have their medical bills. Mm. Plus you are in retirement and so you have to take care of yourself. People are not ready. They're not ready and they're not taking it seriously mm. enough. Mm. Mm. I, I'm wondering how, how that message can be drummed for people to understand, you know, that, that you actually do get to a point in life where money can actually work for you. You know, but before then, you would have, have to put money somewhere. Yes. You know, so, so people then grow and then they ha want to hold on because without that, they can't, they can't even exist. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I was giving you like a platform to tell people, it's so important. <laughs> you know, a 
and, and, and let, let me talk to you young ones out there now. You know, yeah, you're young, you're strong, you're healthy, everything. And you think, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will think about retirement in the next 10 years. Or no, please start today. Mm -hmm. You know, because it just catches up with you so fast. And, you know, I'll, I'll share a quick statistic with you. We were doing an analysis of what people don't get about investing is that one of the best things that you can have working for you is time. The younger you are, the more time you mm -hmm, have, mm -hmm. the less you need to achieve the same goal as somebody who is older. So as an example, we, we ran, we did this analysis and we looked at somebody who was age 40 and I think it was somebody who was age 25 both saving towards or investing towards 1 million CDs at age 60. And KSM, if you are, let's say, let's assume you're getting 15% for the year, fairly conservative. If you are age 25, you would need to s put away 88 CDs a month. If you are age 40, mm. you would need to put away over 700 CDs a month to get to the same goal. Mm. So those people who sit down and say, me, I've got time. Sure, you have time, but at what cost? Mm. Because mm. the more time you take, the mm. more costly the more the it cost. is. That's it. Mm. <laughs> oh, man, it's, 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 I just get so much into this, you know, and so But anyway, we, we thank you for all the investment advice that you're giving us. But now I want to find out more about this Ghanaian dude who, <laughs> who brought you from Canada, man. Yes. The one who told me that no matter what, he will return to Ghana one day. Oh, that's what he told oh, you. He was very beginning. clear about it. Really? Yes. So he said any woman that he marries should know one day he plans to go back to Ghana. Oh, right. I just never thought it would happen. Like, I figured that... <laughs> How many years was it before it happened? Fifteen. Fifteen. So I kind of figured... I thought he may forget about it mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. not really follow it up. But it just so happened that... Right around the 15-year mark, the company he works for, because he's a civil engineer, he does mm. consulting and mining, and the company was setting up an office in Ghana. Mm. So they asked him, they have mm. a branch in an office in Canada, so they were setting up one here. So okay. it worked out. It, oh, it, wow. It worked out. So were you ready to leave for Ghana at any... No. Right? No? No, I wasn't ready. Uh, but... He had been going back and forth for about a year before we came, and it was getting difficult because, I mean, he would be gone for six weeks, seven weeks, he would be mm. back one or two weeks, and it was tough. We've got three kids, um, and even my mom, she was living with us. She moved to Ghana as well. Oh, your mom so moved So yes, here. yes, right. she's here, <laughs> and she says she's not leaving. <laughs> so she was here, but it was too difficult trying to manage mm, on both mm, sides. So mm. we had to make it happen. Oh, and okay. How many kids? Three. Three. They were, all, they were all born in Canada before yes. they came? Okay. Yeah, they're all here. They're, okay. They were born there and okay. then they moved. And they are in Ghana now? Yes. But and they, they love are? it. Their names? Oh, so my eldest daughter, her name is Regine, mm. and she's 16. Then I've got a son, Ethan, he is 14. And then my youngest girl, she's nine soon to be ten her name is sydney sydney so yes i'll assume the man is mr hammer yes reginald reginald hammer yes so yeah. if you think of the name of my first daughter her name is regine he named her okay yeah it was a deal we had he would name the girl i would name the boy so okay of okay. course okay but uh, they love it they actually they love you know living in ghana is not bad it really isn't bad. Mm. It's expensive. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. It's so your mom is here too? She's, she she's came. Oh, she came. She actually came even before I did. So she came with the kids ahead of me. And she came because she said, you know, Jillian, you're going to a country. You've never been there before. And at least you should have one person that you know, you know? and you can turn to. Oh, sweet mother. Well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so she never come to Ghana, wow. nothing. She packed it up, moved here, and it's been good. Like, she loves it so much now. She says, 
I can't pay her to go back to Canada. Wow. So <laughs> it, it, it really, really worked out. Mm, I'm mm. very, very blessed. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, it's great, man. I mean, we've had a wonderful time and learning a lot from you. And folks, like I told you, um, uh, uh, Data Bank is now associated with the KSM show. So every week, I'll give you information that you need to know. And no matter what I tell you, the key thing there is invest. Start. Start. <laughs> start. I mean, just, just start. Start. That's start. the key. Yeah. That's the key. So, so, so um, let's, let, let me throw this offer out there okay. that for anybody who's listening to this program, you young ones who want to start today, uh -huh. is there a number they can call? Yes, and, absolutely. And reach somebody and say, we had it on the KSM show, we want your... They can dial 0302-610-610. So 302-610-610. It's so easy. <laughs> like 610-610. Very, very easy. Okay, and the number is on your screen right yes. now. And, you know, if I can sure. chip in a bit. Like, there's also, we've got our website. We have a mobile app. And one of the things, KSM, that we focus on is not just selling investments. Like, it a lot, even in our mission statement, it's about educating people. Mm. So mm. I encourage people, even if they're not investors of Data Bank, they can go on our website, they can go on our mobile app and actually learn because there are articles, videos, everything. Like, I just want people to be interested and just learn for their own benefit and for the benefit of their families and friends. So in addition to calling us, yes, 302-610-610, visit our website, visit, like download the mobile app and learn. They, they can get the mobile app at the, the Play it's Store? It's on Google Play Store and the App Store, if okay. they've got an iPhone. Okay. So we're not and leaving anyone And is the Bank mobile app? That's just look for Data Bank Group, or just look for Data Bank, one word, D-A-T-A-B-A-N-K. Some people separate it, but it's one word. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you so much, gentlemen. <laughs> Have a wonderful time. Oh, yeah. Stick around, folks. There's more to come. The rich kids from Metro are in the house. Stick around. <laughs>